Okay, so the first time you get on the wheel, the first thing you're going to do is get three to four balls of clay ready that are about one pound to a pound and a quarter. So for the first project, we're working on three to four inch cylinders, usually just going to be going through the steps from beginning to end. Don't expect to get a basic perfect cylinder the very first time, second time, third time, dozen time. I'm going to put this on the wheel head. Let's talk about tools very quick. You have the pottery tool kit. You're going to want your, your um, wood knife your needle tool, a metal rib, maybe, maybe not, we'll see, a wooden rib, your cutoff wire, and a couple sponges. And I always say a couple sponges because they like to take off and get away while you're drawing. A uh, bucket of water, you want it about two thirds full. Make sure it's cold water. Hot water will break the clay down faster, okay? Normally the bucket sits here. But since this is a video demo, we're going to put it to the side like I, like I always do when I show this demo. So the bucket's more out of the way of the shot so you can see what's going on here. The wheel, when you have it, should be turned off. There shouldn't be a light on. If the light is on and you're trying to set up and you accidentally hit the pedal, whatever you put on here is going to fly off onto the floor. And if it's, if it's a stool, it could be a danger issue. So you want to make sure the pedal's all the way down so, so it's up like that. Then you're going to turn your switch on, and you see it should see a light turned on. Um, unplugging and plugging the wheel. If you deal with that, make sure your hands are dry. Now, on here, normally there's circles on the wheel head of what you're going to see, and you want to put the ball of clay directly on there, and you want to slam it down. Then push it, the edges of it, down, and then. You want to make sure that ball of clay is stuck to the wheel. Um, if you don't adhere it to the wheel head or the or to the bat like I'm using right now, it likes to pop off when you start pushing pressure, and then you'll watch your ball of clay fall on the floor. Okay. So for speed, the way this works, we start faster and we work our way slower. Now, if you put your hands on here and you're rocking like this, you're going way too fast. And if it's dragging and slowing down, you're going too slow. Um, once you're here on the wheel, I'll be observing how you deal with speed so we can adjust and fix. Get the clay wet and you want to make sure you adjust your, your stool so you're over the clay. Um, you don't want to be out here like this because you'll be wiggling around. You, if you're too close, um, some people do throw a lot closer than this. As far as the elbows go, you want to lock them into somewhere on your body. That way you can use your whole body from your waist down or your hips up into the clay so you have more strength. If you try to muscle with just this part of your arm, you're going to feel it the next couple of days if you do a two hour session on the wheel. You're going to get sore. Um, so think of it like a lever. Okay. Myself personally, like I said, normally hip bone or rib cage is optimal. I am not a little person. So for me, optimal is actually mid thigh, like right here to knee. Okay, just, and you're gonna figure out what works for you individually with your body type. Okay. So the main thing is you wanna be anchored somewhere. You want the wheel going counterclockwise. You get the clay wet. You're gonna use this part of the hand, this part of the hand to compress. So the first time that you've been on, you get on a wheel, all you're gonna do is try to get through these steps. We do not expect you to make something perfect the very first time, but we wanna practice those steps every time we get on. Each time you do this, you're going to um, develop muscle memory. So I'm gonna squeeze. I usually put my fingers together. Some people lock them. And I'm using this part of my hand, and you can see where the clay is, just like when I was doing my coils in the other videos. I'm using the stronger part of my hand to compress. The first step is to compress into a cone. So you're pulling the clay up once you have it attached. I will have a handout in, on all the classrooms showing step by step a paper handout of this. Okay? Then you're going to take one hand up cup it, and then you're gonna push down into center. And what happens is you're pushing the clay down and with centrifugal force as it's spinning, you're centering the clay. If the clay is uncentered, you don't get an even form. And you wanna you want do this, usually you do this twice. So there's my second, I, I compressed up and back down. Now, at this point, I'm gonna grab a sponge 
and I'm going to compress the outer edge with my thumb and fingers. The other thing you want to do is, if you look right here, this little bit of clay that's right here is making my finger go up and down like an unbalanced record. You want to keep that edge clean where your hand is pushing, or else you're going to keep going, you're going to keep rocking your piece. I'll go ahead and stop this in just a second so you can see it. So here I am compressing the outside, so we're working on centering the clay. So you can see it starts becoming like a rounded hockey puck shape. It, the other way to check if you're centered is put your finger on the side, pull back a little bit, and if it keeps tapping you like this, one side is thicker than the other and it's uneven, okay? So, but when, the first time you get on here, I just want you to get a feel for the clay, feel for the wheel, get a feel for trying to shape it into something. The next step is we're gonna open. So I open with my thumb. Some people open with your fingers. If you start watching lots of videos online, you're gonna see lots of different ways to open. I open with my thumb because it makes a natural bowl shape. So, and make sure everything's teamwork. I'm opening with my left hand. You can open with your right also. And if you're gonna start sinking in, you gotta be careful not to go all the way to the bottom and then you have a bottomless cylinder. So from here, you can see that my finger is just that, that, that curved form. Now, now, when I've opened to this point, I switch to my index and middle finger, one on top of the other a little bit, the other hand on top, teamwork is essential, and I'm gonna pull out towards me, and what you'll start getting is a piece of clay that looks like a donut. I'm gonna compress the top. I always compress as I work. So what compressing is doing is I'm just holding the clay here, letting it glide between my fingers, compressing down to make sure this stays even. At this point, um, I'm gonna take the water out that's sitting in the middle. You wanna not leave water sitting in your piece as you work. It will break down the bottom of the piece and it can cause what's called S cracks, which are water cracks. So at this point, I'm gonna stop the wheel and then I'm gonna take my needle tool. So the first time that you're doing this, second time you're doing this, and for some people they do this for the rest of their career. I'm gonna take my needle tool, push down and, and check the thickness on my bottom. So right now I'm at about a quarter inch. So you can go to a quarter to an inch, eighth of an inch. Be careful going too thin at the bottom because when I take this off the wheel, I'm gonna use my wire. And if you don't leave enough clay at the bottom, you're gonna end up with a bottomless cylinder. Now later on, if you end up with bottomless cylinders, we'll talk about some solutions to that problem. Okay, now that I have this opened, I'm gonna take my right hand, make the letter L, and put it against the, 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 bot, the top of the wheel head, and I'm gonna push in and make a bevel, or make an undercut. And you can see that little shelf that I made. I'm, I do this, and I've taught Ceramic One students for years to do this, is I'm using one hand on top of the other to push in, making this undercut from my first pull, but that creates this shadow on this line here. Now for this pull, I'm gonna show you right now how I was first taught to pull. I'm gonna take this sponge, stick it onto these two fingers on the outside. My other hand is gonna be like this on the inside, and I'm gonna stretch this up and try to get it taller. Um, the other thing is keep an eye on the water level. If you're too dry, you'll stick and tear. If you're too wet, usually there's not an issue with being too wet. I'm gonna adjust the speed. The nice thing about motorized wheels is you can adjust the speed down and you'll notice I keep taking my foot off the pedal. Um, now, I always tell my students, think of this as a game. This is the line that your finger is gonna be and you're gonna go up and you don't want this shadow, this right here, you don't want that line to fall behind. If it falls behind, you've gone too fast. So here's my first pull. So you go up, 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 and I'm using even pressure. And once I get to here, to the top, about top half inch, I'm letting up gently. So there's my first pull. After each pull, I recenter my rim and recompress my rim. That way I'm gathering the clay so I have excess clay there at the end to do the final finishing up of the piece. I'm gonna take the water out of the middle again. Now I'm taking my hand again, that same L form, and I'm gonna push in. There's that undercut again. 
Then I'm gonna clean that little bit of, of spot, that same place where my hand hits. Normally, with a small piece of clay like this, two pulls, you should get most of the weight out of the bottom and into the piece. So here's my second pull. So here we go up, 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 and start letting up gently. Now the one thing about watching this on video or even live, um, you're gonna have to develop and learn your touch. Um, you're gonna learn what's too much pressure, what's not enough pressure, and that's something that you have to learn individually on your own. Um, I can help you, and I will, but and see, and I'll see if there's any minor mistakes as you throw, but you can't replace time or effort, which means the more practice you do, it's just like sketching or drawing or any of the other arts. The more you do this, the better it should get. Um, now I'm making another undercut, but it's a lot more delicate because most of the clay is now into the wall. So now I'm going to push out with my inside hand, and that rounds it a little bit. Then I'm going to slow up my speed again. Um, as you throw and get thinner and thinner, you slow down a little bit. If, if you go too fast, when it gets thin, it'll start collapsing just like your pinch bowls when you try to build pinch bowls too fast and they turn into um, tortillas. So here's my last pull. Normally the last pull or third pull for a small cylinder is a shaping pull and getting the last weight out of the bottom. So right here is where this piece is pretty much done. Okay. I'm going to compress my rim um, and round it out a little bit. Uh, mostly if I end up turning this into something that I'm going to drink water out of or liquid, I want that rim to be rounded and smooth so it doesn't, isn't sharp on, on, on my mouth. Now I'm going to take the wood knife and I'm going to go at an angle down and cut off some of this excess. It's almost like a little belt of clay. And this will help me get the piece off the wheel. I'm going to take my wire. It also will save you on time when we start talking about how to trim pieces. So, so there's that little piece of clay off. I put that in my bucket. So from here, I'm going to take my cutoff wire, run the wire across the bottom, keep it straight to the wheel head, and then you'll see that this clay was dry enough, it's actually moving already. Take, clean your fingertips. Um, normally I wipe them, off, wipe them off so they're dry. And I make a V and I pick up and twist. And I twist a piece off. If you try to go straight up, um, it, it might not pop off. It might reseal itself if you take too long trimming or um, cutting it off with a wire. So here, I just twist and off. Put it over to the side. And then I'm ready for the next piece. Do not remove this piece of clay if you're gonna throw another piece of clay right here right now. That will actually help the next piece of clay stick to the wheel head. And now the next piece of clay is ready to go. Okay. So this is the piece that I made just now on the wheel, but I wanna do a step that normally new students are afraid to do. And what I'm gonna do is cut this in half because I want to review my walls. So I'm, what I'm looking at is the thickness of my walls. So you can see there's a little bit of, it's a little bit thicker at the bottom. When I was talking about trimming, this helps hold the cylinder up. And when I trim, that's how much I'll cut off in trimming. And that'll lighten the piece and change the shape and give me a foot ring. But let's say you make a piece and you cut it in half and it looks like this. It goes thick, thin, thick, thin. What happened is you pushed really hard in moments, like you were like pulling, and all of a sudden you got this, this moment like, like, oh no, it's going to get away, so you squeezed, and then you let up, and then you squeezed again, and sometimes that happens from breathing. You got to work on practicing your breathing, because what I've seen is people get thick and thin walls because as they breathe really hard, like they're worried about it, and they go <gasps> like that and suck in, they squeeze, and then they let up, and they squeeze and let up, and then what happens is the whole piece will collapse on itself. So you wanna think consciously of how you're breathing on the wheel as you throw. You gotta just work on that pressure. Um, when I was a ceramic one student, that was my main problem, 
is I can develop a, a delicate touch with my hands. You've got to have pressure at the right moments and let up at the right moments. That is what took me the longest to learn to throw on the wheel. So it's a critical stage to get on here, practice the steps, but understand the feel of clay in your hands and what you can do. The other thing is, as you're compressing in your pools, if you're compressing space like this and going up, that's the wall. So if you're pressing and going up and you're pushing too hard and in, or that's why as it wiggles, you'll change it. And you're gonna see me modify my throwing steps and I'll be showing you different ways to pull. This is just one way.